Alright everyone, in this video we'll be taking a look at Kubuntu 12.04. Now this is a long-term support release, it will be supported for the next five years. Now, this is the last Kubuntu to be released under Canonical's management and funding. From now on it will be funded by Blue Systems. Uh, this is probably a good thing because some of the criticisms I've held against Kubuntu in the past have been the lack of Ubuntu-like applications that it's come with. So like it's never had an equivalent to the Ubuntu One cloud storage service. So yeah, hopefully it'll be a good thing. Anyway, there'll be some timings in the description below, so feel free to skip around to a different part of the video. So enjoy. Well the big difference between Kubuntu and Ubuntu are the desktop interface. You don't have a Unity launcher in Kubuntu, you've got more of the classic style with the application menu, with a searcher and you can look through applications this way. So you can click through and then jump back. The other neat feature about Kubuntu, the widgets you can put on the desktop. So right click, go to add widgets, have a little quick scroll along here. You notice there's some functional widgets as well as some, well, eye candy or humorous widgets. So like I've got a bouncy ball, and I'll tear that off and throw it around the screen. I mean, it serves no purpose really, but uh, it's eye candy. But carrying on scrolling through, it'll give you an idea of what you can have. So yeah, quite a lot really. This is another of the pointless eye candy ones. Life. Yeah, I have absolutely no idea what it's doing there. It almost looked like QR codes that it's generating. Yeah. Certainly quite a lot of widgets now in the latest KDE and Plasma desktop. So taking a look at what applications Kubuntu comes pre-installed with. So starting under games, we've got card games, we've just got one here called K Patience. Under graphics, we've got Document Viewer, LibreOffice Draw, GwenView Image Viewer, and K Snapshot. Under Internet we've got K Torrent, Blue Devil, Aggregator Feed Reader. Copete Internet Messenger, KPPP Dialup, Quasel IRC, Kmail, a Firefox Browser Installer, because the default web browser is Reconk. Just open that up. It's actually a very similar interface to Chrome, really. Just pop over to YouTube. Have a look at one of my videos. I did have to install the Kubuntu restricted extras through the Moon Package Manager, but with that we should be able to play Flash videos. And this video is currently unavailable. Okay, I don't think it is somehow. Let's try another one. Another video currently unavailable. I don't believe you. Okay, I don't know why it's not working there. I think I've just found a bug. Okay, carrying on through the applications under multimedia, so we've got Amarok Music Player, K3B Disc Burner, KMix Sound Mixer, and Dragon Player for playing videos. And the Amarok Music Player is quite nice. Just open that up. And you notice we're setting up the Amazon Store here. So I just selected my country, click OK. The good thing with Amarok is it shows the lyrics and information from Wikipedia about each song that you're playing. Unfortunately though I don't have any songs to demonstrate this with in this virtual machine. Under Office, so we've got K Address Book, Ocular, LibreOffice, Contact and K Organizer. Now, I'm disappointed to see that it comes with LibreOffice because one of the boasting features on Kubuntu's page is that there's the new Kligra Office, which is a KDE based office application. I'm disappointed that LibreOffice came pre-installed instead of the Kligra Office. Okay, under settings, we just have the system settings. There are quite a few system. There's quite a few settings you can change here, although it's not particularly easy or user friendly. I don't think because to find anything, well, okay, you've got a search here, so maybe I want to change some of the keyboard settings. Maybe we want to change some of the keyboard shortcuts. I'll go there. Okay, it's found. It's under gestures, but then I go and configure the keyboard shortcuts and. Hang on, how do I add custom shortcuts? And 
why are there so many I can change? See, I think the settings in GNOME are just that bit simpler and easier to understand. But fair enough, I'm sure if you're used to it, then there's no issue at all. So under Utilities, there's a few different things there. You've got Kate Text Editor, Clipboard Tool, Pop-up Notes, a Calculator, and a couple of accessibility programs. Right, so here's what I thought of Kubuntu 12.04. So easy to use. Uh, it's fairly easy to use. I just find Ubuntu a bit easier to use though. So ease of installation. Yep, certainly is. You've got the graphical installer. That's pretty easy to use. Styling. Well, one thing KDE manages very well is to look very nice and pretty. Customization. It's not as easy to, not as easy to customize the system as it is in Ubuntu and GNOME. And also it's very limiting on what you can customize with the keyboard shortcuts. At a boot up speed, it's pretty good. Uh, number of bugs, right, I did notice one there with the YouTube videos not playing in Reconk in Reconk web browser. Uh, selection of pre-installed apps. Well, there's no proprietary codecs, although they're easily installed through the Moon Package Manager, or you, know, or you could install them during the system installation. And I feel that the Caligra Office Suite should have come pre-installed instead of LibreOffice, since they make so much of a big thing of it on their website. And it's probably better to use since it's a K it's since it's built for KDE systems. A number of apps available, I'll say the same thing about all Ubuntu distros, there could always be more. And it comes with both the 64 and 32 bit versions. So, good points. Perhaps a brighter outlook now that Kubuntu is released from Canonical's grip and funding. I think they might be able to do more of their own thing, and I reckon distro will be a lot better because of it. The bad points the KDE is a bit more of a heavier weight desktop and not suitable for older, less powerful machines. And there's no Ubuntu One, although an alternative own cloud cloud storage service is available. But if it hadn't been if it didn't have Ubuntu in the name, I wouldn't have criticised them on that, because Kubuntu as a distro is actually pretty good. But because they call it Ubuntu, I expect some of the Ubuntu features to be in there. But overall I reckon that's worth 75%. So thanks for watching. See you later.